Hello and welcome to the episode 154 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we get the Beatles rehearsing for the second recording edition of their career, a hospitalization and a new way to record bass. Let's start with the now usual concert at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg. The 3rd of June 1961 engagement, seeing the Beatles on stage with Pete Bass and drums, was the 64th straight night of their second residency in West Germany. In 1962, instead, the same lineup of the Beatles had the first of two rehearsals at the Carven Club in Liverpool. After being rejected from DECA despite their good audition on the 1st of January, as detailed in episode 1 and 32 of What A Fab Day, the lads didn't want to risk another failure and decided to rehearse their material to make it super tight. Today, they did that from 3 to 6.30 pm. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, joined the other acts of the Roy Orbison Package Tour on the stage of the Granada Cinema in Woolwich, London. In the morning of the 3rd of June 1964, Ringo Starr fell ill during a group's photo session in Barnes, London. He was hospitalized at the University College Hospital, where he was ordered complete rest after being diagnosed with a case of tonsillitis and pharyngitis. This was more than a simple concern for the Beatles. They were to live in less than 24 hours for a series of concerts around the world, and it was too late to postpone or cancel the tour. On suggestion from George Martin, drummer Jimmy Nichol was summoned at the EMI Studios at 3 pm for an addition slash rehearsal. Nichol was a veteran session drummer who had recently participated to the recording of a cover LP called Beatlemania. His knowledge of the material, plus his inconspicuous character and his general obscurity for the public, made him the perfect candidate to be a substitute for Ringo. It had to be clear for anyone, including Ringo himself, that it was not a role that Jimmy could cover permanently. Nichol showed up at 3 pm at the EMI studios in Abbey Road, where he rehearsed I want to hold your hand, she loves you, I saw her standing there, this boy, can't buy me love, and long tall Sally, with John, Paul and George. They wrapped things up at 4 pm with Nichol getting the job. In Derek Taylor's 50 years adrift, George Harrison is quoted commenting, I was very against that. I didn't want to do the tour without Ringo. It's stupid. It's like Cliff Richard getting sick and putting someone else in his place. The Beatles were, always will be, the four fabs, and so three fabs and a not-so-fab is not the Beatles. At least that's how I felt. When I think back, it's hard to imagine how we were treated or bullied by Brian Epstein and George Martin into accepting that situation that we had to go. We should have been more forceful and said, no, we're not doing it. A second booked recording session between 5.30 and 9.30 pm was used by the remaining Beatles to record rough demos of some songs that were, so to speak, in circulation. George Harrison recorded his You'll Know What To Do. The song, copyrighted by Jap Music, a company formed by Dick James and Brian Epstein, was not re-recorded either by the Beatles or by any other associated act and remained dormant until it was included in the Anthology One album in 1995. Then, according to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, Paul McCartney recorded a revised arrangement for his It's For You, a song he had given to Cilla Black. Beatlesbible.com refuted that, claiming that the recorded song was actually an arrangement of You're My Word, a song recorded by Black but not composed by the Lennon-McCartney duo. 
It is not clear who's right, nor what purpose would your my word have served. Finally, John Lennon recorded a third demo, no reply. The song would be eventually recorded by the Beatles, but John initially gave the song to NEMS artist Tommy Quickly to be recorded and released as a single, a release that never materialized. The final job of the day was having the three remaining Beatles record some overdubs on any time at all and things we said today. There's some speculation that if Ringo had not fallen ill, You Know What To Do, No Reply or the other song recorded today might have been included in the A Hard Day's Night LP, which was uncharacteristically released with 13 songs instead of the usual 14, but naturally, we will never be sure. Before concluding the episode, let me remind you once again to please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out how you can help me to focus on the creation of more and better music-related content to put online. Eventually, it's on that page that you will get an update on the chance to buy the deluxe version of this podcast via NFTs. You'll have the chance to support me buy something that will give you hours of extra content to enjoy and to resell the token at a later date, if you wish. Who knows, perhaps you can make some money out of the whole deal. 3rd of June 1966 The Beatles completed the work on I Want To Tell You Tonight at the Abbey Road EMI Studios, working between 7.00 pm and 2.30 am. The work of the day consisted in recording a bass part by Paul McCartney. Until this night, the bass had been recorded with the rest of the basic rhythm track with other instruments. Due to the limitations of the recording machines used at the EMI studios at the time, with only four tracks to record on, this meant that the bass often shared tape space with other instruments. From tonight onwards, the Beatles and George Martin started to record the bass later, as an overdub, alone on a single track. This, naturally, allowed for much greater manipulation opportunities during the mixing. Talking about mixing, four mono mixes of I Want To Tell You and five of Yellow Submarine rounded up the session. This completes this episode of What A Fab Day. Tomorrow the Beatles will start an important war tour, perhaps their most important one, without their drummer. How will they manage? Tune in to find out. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.